Good morning, I'm Susan Bender and welcome to the brilliant breakfast at Vista Village. I'd like to thank everyone who's uh, joining us on this exciting webinar because it's about women supporting women. The subject today is what does it take to be a successful entrepreneur? The Women Supporting Women initiative has changed the lives of young women by funding the work of the Prince's Trust. As women, we all learn by sharing our stories. And help is needed now more than ever because the pandemic has exacerbated gender inequality impacting on mental health, wellness, well-being, employment of women across the country. The Prince's Trust programme gives vulnerable people practical financial support which is needed to stabilise their lives and help them develop skills in work and life. If you'd like to donate during this webinar for this worthy cause, there is a link at the bottom of the page. I'm honoured today to be joined by Anushka Dukas, whose idea it was to start The Brilliant Breakfast and who's taken this initiative nationwide Anushka is the founder of the eponymous jewellery brand, Anushka, and also founder of the, uh, pre her previous brand, Links of London. I'm also delighted to welcome Chrissy Rucker, OBE, founder of the globally successful business, The White Company. She's also a founder patron of the Women Supporting Women at the Prince's Trust. Finally, I'd love to welcome Daisy Natchville, who has taken on the world-dominated um, arena of bespoke tailoring. And she is the first woman to have an exclusive woman's shop front on Savile Row. So that's absolutely amazing. We have brilliant women here. I'd like to begin by sharing two videos of two very different young women's stories whose lives have been turned around by the Prince's Trust and their work. My father had Parkinson's disease and there was no cure. I grew up witnessing my father getting more sick. When he died, my whole world really did feel like it had fallen apart. After my father passed away, I was extremely vulnerable. I met this, this man and in a sense, I suppose I was groomed and I was raped when I was 17 and badly beaten up. This went on for several months. I felt angry with myself that I'd allowed this to happen to me. Despite everything, I managed to get a place at Bristol University. I met this wonderful young man who um, kind of filled me with hope you know, it made me feel safe. Unfortunately, my first year of university, he was shot dead. I just couldn't understand why these things kept happening to me. And I really wanted to give up. And so a friend of mine told me about the Prince's Trust. I did the four day training for the Enterprise Programme, where you're taught different skills of how to run a business. I'd really never set up a business before. I felt really empowered and I thought, actually, you know, maybe I can do this. Maybe this is something that I can do. My company, WorkSpa, is a corporate wellbeing company. So we go into organisations across the UK and offer services such as mindfulness, massage, yoga. I was asked if I'd like to apply to become an ambassador. It's just been the most unbelievable journey. So I've spoken at lots of different events. My first talk was at Buckingham Palace. It's given me a voice. You know, being able to share my story has been absolutely life-changing. I feel more alive and, and more at peace with myself. Couldn't possibly yeah. be more proud of you. <laughs> Could a mum not be? If there was one thing that I would say to the Prince's Trust, it would just be thank you so much for the way that you've changed my life. I'm so grateful. Before the Prince's Trust, she never felt 
comfortable. She never seemed to be that good with people or able to express herself. Employment now, for most young folk these days, it's extremely difficult. What I found out, I was pregnant with Kyle when I was 14. I had Kyle two months early. It was really hard seeing your, your baby in an incubator. I was stressing out the fact that I didn't have any food. She'd be like, Mom, I'm hungry. And I'd always be sure that, he's, that he had food, and I'd be like, right, OK, I'm not having anything to eat today. Back then, I was really nervous. I wasn't really happy. I didn't think there was any point in being happy about anything when you don't know if you're going to cope. So I found out about the Princess Trust getting to health care through the Job Centre. Rachel came to one of our selection events, stood out pretty much instantly actually. I found the Gentile of Care interesting. It was a relief because I wasn't being judged for the, the label that you get. There's a job opportunity with the children in the hospital nearby. Put my name down for it. When I found out I got the job, I was ecstatic because I didn't have to worry about being financially stressed or struggling. I think what the Princess Trust did was it let her see what she could be. Let her deal with people better. The Princess Trust are outstanding. They've helped me come a long way. They're a lifeline. <laughs>
if we're able to do that and get as many people involved in being able to provide that for as many young women as possible, then you know, that's exactly how, what I'd love to get involved in doing. Wonderful. And Chrissy, what was your, what was it, piqued your interest to get involved? Well, we founded Women Sporting Women two years ago. And really the reason we founded it was because actually more young men were being helped by the Prince's Trust than young women. Um, and so what we've done is we've founded an incredible group of, of women in business and philanthropy. And really, you know, we're, we're working hard together to help in a number of different ways. Um, the first is to raise as much money as we possibly can, because quite simply, the more money we raise, the more young women we can sponsor through the programmes at the Trust. And the programmes really are life-changing. It's just extraordinary to see the difference it can make. Um, the second is, you know, we want to share our stories and, uh, you know, share the good things and the bad things. And, you know, and, and I suppose sort of, you know, just by sharing our journeys and how we've coped with difficulties as we've gone along um, is, is hopefully sort of interesting to the young women. And uh, we want, wanted to, you know, when we started at the Prince's Trust, some of the programmes were quite male orientated. So the other influence we've tried to have is to introduce some programmes that are slightly more female orientated. So there's been a great new programme we've introduced called Get Into Dressmaking. So if like Daisy, you're interested in going to the fashion industry or into tailoring, you know, that's a great start. And they've introduced so many new wonderful programmes over the last two years with, you know, sp much more specific female support, um, which has been amazing. And then the other thing is, is as business women, you know, where we can, uh, we'll try and help by offering employment of the young people as they come through. That's fascinating. Anushka and Chrissy, um, you, you both have, have established very successful um, businesses. At the beginning, had you always dreamt and planned to um, get to this scale, a level of success? I mean, abso no, absolutely not. I mean, I, abso I, I ended up falling into my, into my first business, which was Links of London, by total chance. But I guess it's those, it's just seeing a tiny opportunity and is there a glimmer of something? And at the time, you know, it was trying to find presence for men. It was, it was just quite difficult to find presents for men. Still quite difficult to find presents for men. Has your mother actually helped you um, come up with the idea? Well, no, my mother had a fish business and, um, and she, I was selling property. I mean, I couldn't have been further away from what I ended up doing, but yeah. she had a fish business and she rang me and she said, I've got 60 chefs, all men. I need to give them a present. Have you got any ideas? And I was like, well, not really. And I rang her back and said, actually, I found a, a craftsman who can make anything in silver. So why don't we find a picture of fish in a book, we'll make them into cufflinks and you can give those to the chefs. And it was just cheaper to make double. So I made 120 pairs of fish cufflinks, sold my mother the first 60 and then I had the extra 60. So I went to Harvey Nichols with these cufflinks and anyway, and the rest is history. But it was an unlikely start yeah. and not one that I ever planned <coughs> for, if I'm honest. Yes, and I think that's important for, for women to know. Your, your start doesn't have to be the formal way of um, starting a business. It's the unlikely things that can grow into something yeah, it's just quite the, incredible. You know, yeah, I mean, some of it is just, you know, recognising that there's a tiny opportunity and going for it. Um, and others, you know, Chrissy, your story's different to mine. And Daisy, you're at the beginning of your career. Um, did you dream to become an entrepreneur and start your own business at the beginning? How, how did you navigate that? I think I always wanted to make a mark on the fashion industry in some way, not personally, but with something that I was able to do. And initially kind of starting work in the women's wear industry, I realised it was obviously quite saturated and there was a lot going on and, and maybe there wasn't room to do something different. And it was only by moving into menswear that I was able to see this kind of gap for women and, and kind of run with it. But it's certainly, it was a dream and then it became a reality and I'm only at the start, but it's exciting to watch that grow and hopefully one day be as successful as these two. 
<laughs> Chrissy and Anushka, you came up with the idea of the company, but um, at the beginning or throughout your journey, is there a heap of a pile of um, startups that never made it? Oh, I mean, uh, there are definitely some a few ideas that never made it. Yeah. Well, I think I, one was um, hair accessories that definitely died at fast death. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, there have definitely been a few ideas, but but actually, once 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 we kind of got on the on the journey, um, I just we just stuck stuck with it. I'm mean, Chrissy. You 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 were very clear about your idea. Yes. <laughs> Which is the opposite, because you were very clear about your idea. And did you have people dissuading you from starting a company that sold white goods in that sense? Uh, oh, well, <clears throat> I mean, I think, I think a lot of my friends thought I was absolutely mad when, uh, uh, when I set off. But I think, you know, it's, it's, it's been an incredible journey and it's been um, at times a real roller coaster. And you know, it's, I suppose it's been 26 years, but over, the, over that period of time, I mean, it's been an incredible team effort that's made it happen. And, and it's also been, um, you know, having some really sort of, you know, amazing mentors in your life and people who you can talk to and people who are there who help and support you through the, the challenging moments. And, you know, I always think I had four very strong female influences in my life. Um, the first was my mum, who, you know, I, I wasn't a child that thrived at school, so she kind of, you know, she was always there. Life, life's problems were always solved during a cup of coffee, and she'd get me back into school, and she was just, uh, just always, and always is today, the most incredible support. Um, the second was my boss at Harpers and Queen, and, you know, what she really taught me was that, you know, if you... You know, if, you're, if you don't believe, you know, if you can't do something, you can learn how to do it. And actually, if, if, if you want to know how to do it, you can just, just find out the technique of how to learn to do it. And then Vicky Woods, who was my editor, she gave me an incredible opportunity because she allowed me to run the department between um, one editor leaving and a new one coming. Um, so that, that was amazing. And then... You know, Susie, she was the person who, you know, the idea was hatched with at breakfast one day. Yeah. And, you know, we decided, wouldn't it be great if this company that sold white things after two experiences we'd had? And then, you know, it was my husband who said to me, uh, you know, you can do this. And I think it's really, it's about having people in your life as you go on the journey who pick you up when you need a helping hand and who also just give you the confidence yeah. uh, to believe in yourself and to go for it. Yes, that's very important. Daisy, you're at the beginning, so did you, have you had some uh, wonderful people involved in your life that have mentored you and said, yes, you should do it, go for it, or? I think certainly I would not be on this path without amazing people and an amazing support yes. network. And actually when I started out, I went for about 100 coffees in three months with people from all over the industry, not within the industry, people whose businesses had failed, people whose was very successful, and just tried to kind of gather as much information as I can and learn as much as I could as quickly as I could. And that was invaluable advice that everyone gave me along the way. Um, but I think it's uh, exactly as Chrissy said, the importance of mentors or a support network is, is key because... Being an entrepreneur mm. is not easy, and particularly navigating these kind of really uncharted waters of pandemic and where we're at in the future of that. And actually, you have the real lows and the real highs, and that's entrepreneurship. And the real lows, particularly when you don't have a co-founder, mm -hmm. can be tough, and, and you need someone to pick you up or remind you or ground you or all these things. And I think having people that keep you in check but also can be there in real times of need or you know, make an introduction, remind you of a certain thing. It's, it's, I really am incredibly grateful for the support I've received and, and why I'm so passionate about hopefully other young girls being able to receive it like I yeah. did. It's just about get, giving, giving confidence, you know. I yes. mean, I, I, I think, I, I mean, when I, when I had this idea for The Brilliant Breakfast, part of it was because I realised that actually it's 30 years 
um, this year that my mother died when I was quite young at 23. But in that short time, she was able to give me the tools I kind of need and have needed through my life to help me to make the right decisions and all of those things. And I think what, what really struck me is, my goodness, if I hadn't had her, like so yes. many of the young people at Princess Trust help, you know, if I hadn't had her, I would have found it much harder. Mm. And whilst there have been other, um, lots of other people that have helped me um, through my career, um, without the, the mentorship and without this, com I mean, the confidence is the thing that is so important for young people, mm. particularly if they haven't had uh, some of the, the kind of step ups that we've all had. Um, so. So that's the, that's the absolute crux of what, what we need to do, is to kind of help. And the young women that we're helping, I mean, yes. they are living, you know, they face real challenges. So they're living with domestic abuse. They're living with very long-term unemployment. They are bullying, addiction, homelessness. And, you know, the challenges that come uh, with being a single parent. Which is really tough. Tough, so it's good to have a great support system. Yeah. And, and did you find, um, especially for you, Daisy, were there people within your industry, people you knew, or did you actually reach out to people you never met before but admired or thought they're doing something great? Because I think that's another confidence thing to actually approach someone that you don't know but you admire or... Yeah. I think that, I think, I always say if there's ever a time that anyone asked my advice, I say, the one thing, and it was told to me, is people are always flattered to be asked for your, for, yeah. to get their advice, you know? It's a really lovely thing to be very humble and say to someone, I want to learn, and I want your advice, and, I'm, I, you know, how, how did you get to where you are, or whoever they might be. And so I always say, you know, ne try and never be afraid to reach out, because the worst that can happen is they won't reply, which can happen because people are busy, and it's a bit of a shame. But most people will really be willing to help, and if they can't, they'll be willing to introduce you to someone else who can. And through these hundred coffees, it wasn't all people I knew. It was a lot of kind of more, I get, you know, feeling like I was being quite creepy, being like, hey, I love what you do, I love yeah. you, you know. But then you realise they reply saying, absolutely, you know, we've got 15 minutes because I'm super busy, but come here. And, and you're, I was willing, you know, to go there. And it's so nerve-wracking, and that I understand, and it does require a level of confidence. Mm -hmm. But... It's always good to remember the other side, people are willing to help. And, and actually, up through that, then you meet someone else and there's always this chain of kind of connections yes. that appear from it. As long as you're kind of willing and open to be humble and ask, and, and, and I don't think, you know, everyone loves it in some shape or form to be asked for advice and help. Yeah. I think it's really, I think you're absolutely right, it's really important that, to, I mean, one of the things that my mother always said to me is no, no is not really a word that I was allowed to use at home. But, you know, actually, all you have to do is pick up the phone. <coughs> the answer could be no, but if you don't pick up the phone or you'll write the email, know. you'll never know, yeah. and it's what if. And you yes. never want to be looked back and think, what if? You know, yes. I think. So. I agree, totally. Chrissy, have there been... Any awful moments where you've thought, oh my God, I'm not going to make it, that's it, I give up. And what has <laughs> actually helped you to continue? Because I think we, 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 as in business, we all go through that, whatever you're doing, any challenge, you think, oh my God, that's it, I can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. What, was there a moment, many moments, and what was it that kept you going? Oh, do you know, I mean, I, I think there are many, many moments over the years, I mean, you know, if I think at the beginning, you know, it was it was technology, you know, being able to, getting technology to work and, you know, learning about how to use data and, you know, effectively using your data. But I mean, you know, over the years, there have been so many things, um, you know, so, you know, hiring the right people, you know, getting the team right. If the team is good, mm. business is good and, and the world feels great. But if it's if it's not if it's not working well, it's tough. You know, perhaps trying to tackle too many things at once, uh, taking on too many big projects. Um, at times, things like, we, you know, we got copied quite a lot in the early days. So overcoming that. Um, and I think, you know, keeping the brand on brand as you go through the journey of building a business, mm -hmm. you know, sticking to those core principles that you had at the beginning, which make you different and make mm -hmm. you special and make you destination. Uh, so hanging on to that. 
And, you know, I, I think, you know, there were all, all sorts of things gone wrong along the way. I mean, I remember the first most disastrous thing that happened was um, a factory roof blew off. And uh, <laughs> I was really excited because I think I'd sold... Uh, 40 pairs of sheets and I had to ring all 40 customers and say I'm so sorry but the factory roof (laughs) and I can't deliver them and amazingly every single customer waited four months for their sheets to come when the when the factory got going again but you know I think as you go on the journey um, you know finding time to talk you know, talking about your problems, talking about what's on your mind um, is so important. Making space to sort of step outside of the business and giving yourself time to think clearly. You know, building a phenomenal team. You know, you need a great team, all pulling in the same direction. Um, and, you know, it's, it, it's it, you know, that that's one of the most exciting feelings in the world. Um, and, you know, I, I'm not someone who looks back and who sort of, you know, because I think it's so important. You constantly test and learn and try new yeah. things, and that's how business evolves. And if things go wrong, you know, don't worry about it, because out of things that go wrong come great new ideas. You know, so it's all part of the learning process. Daisy, as you've just started your business, not, how long how long has your business been actually? Just um, under two years. Just under two yeah, years. Very so there must have been many moments where you must have thought, yeah. I can't do this. I think also the last two years have been pretty rocky anyway oh with God. Brexit oh. and the pandemic. And, <laughs> but, but no, lots of moments, lots of moments. And particularly now with this pandemic, because you can't turn to someone and say, what did you do in your first, you know, global pandemic it, it's tricky and you're navigating <laughs> waters you haven't and no one really else has and yeah. so and being a really young business you know there's 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 make or break there's make or break decisions at all points and i imagine and you know as you become more successful but if the thing that's really keeping me going is is the idea of if if we can be resilient in these times and if i can navigate the ship out steadily through these waters then i hope that I'm setting up a business that kind of can go and, and have legs for a very long time. But through through these difficult times, yes. so much, as Chrissy says, so much opportunity comes. Because what it does, it allows you, because none of us have been through this before, so, you know, we've all, we've all had to go to our houses and speak to everybody on the computer. Yes. <laughs> but, you, but it allows you to actually to step back a bit, work mm. out what the truly important things yeah, are, right. what makes the difference, get rid of all the stuff that you've been doing and all the noise and concentrate on the things that make the boat go faster. Yeah. Or, you know, and, and, and so I think through all these things, you know, we went through 9-11, I mean, that was an absolutely shocking, you said, you know, what, I mean, that was a, a near disaster. Yeah. But actually, once we step back from the kind of total horror and panic, we simplified our business massively. We had to, yes, but it just makes you stronger. So I think that you know, with it comes opportunity. Some of those, mm. some of those things. Yes. Well, we've all got to find new, new ways and new ways to talk to our customers. That's that's relevant. You know, you're no longer going to talk to them the way you used to, and mm. it just needs to be yes. truly relevant to what's going on yes. in one's life. So it kind of just. Well, as a business, you have to evolve and grow yeah. Yeah. year to year, moment to moment, and navigate your way through whatever yeah. life. There's some expression. The world and economics. The expression is never waste a good crisis or something like that. <laughs> well, that one, that's a good, it's a good one. No, but it kind of is because it forces you to kind of look, yes. at, the, look at the issues. Yeah. Well, let's talk about branding. Chrissy, your brand name says what it does. And Daisy, you've come up with a very interesting name for your brand. And Anushka, you named your brand after yourself. Mm. How did this come about? What was it that... Maybe you think that's it. That's that's the name of my business. Well, we did discuss it a bit. Yeah, could have called it John, my husband, but maybe that wasn't <laughs> quite so. <laughs> you know, um, but I did hesitate quite yes. a lot about that. But I think um, for me, um, it's called Anishka. I am the designer. I do design the jewellery, and I think in a kind of world of huge big brands, hmm. 
People are wanting the authenticity. They want, I'm a living designer. It's quite nice to have the narrative and the stories and for me to be, to be able to tell those stories through what I do. So I think that kind of, um, the very personal nature of jewellery is, it seems to, you know, be, be it, it was just the right, seemed to be the right choice. Although it's got its ups and downs, uh, downsides, I'm just going to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do that the first time, because... You know. What were the downsides? Downsides of calling it Anushka? Yes. Well, I've got to say, I'm the per people tend to want to see me, so that's up and down, yes. you know, all the time. It's not ideal. Um, but I don't know, I mean, it's early days yet, it's only 10 years, so we'll, we'll see what the, what the downsides yeah. are. And it's interesting for you to say it's early days yet, after surviving well, Chris 10 is, years. She's 26 <laughs> years later, so it feels like it's early days to okay. me. Two years, you know. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> me, maybe it's me. <laughs> You've and Chrissy, done two businesses. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think a name is so important, or is it? Well, do you know, I mean, listen, the market today is so competitive. So, you know, unless you have a really strong and clear brand proposition, um, you know, it, knowing what you're going to be famous for, what you're going to be destination for, what your purpose is, um, is what's going to build a strong mm. brand. And what, that's what's going to keep your customers coming back to you again and again. And you, you need to be known for something and you need to be trusted for something. And so, you know, in our case, um, really, you know, there are, there are four values at the heart of what we do. So the first is obviously, you know, we love white. Um, we're absolutely passionate about white and beautiful white products um, in the home. And, and actually, you know, do you know, in today's world, um, I, I sort of, you know, I, I I think, you know, white and its, its relationship with calm and well-being just, funnily enough, feels more relevant than ever. Mm -hmm. So that's... Um, <clears throat> our passion for white is... I mean, I can, I can talk about that for hours, so I won't. <laughs> um, you know, our second is product. Yes. And, uh, you know, I did couture. I studied couture at, at college. And, you know, it is detail that yes. makes or breaks a product. And, you know, our goal is to be the best possible quality for the price and I can't tell you how passionate we are about product I mean we sample and sample again and sample again until it's really perfect mm. so um, I honestly think we have the most passionate development team on the planet uh, the third thing is you know we want to inspire because you know I remember so clearly when I tackled that first home for Nick you know I stood there and I really, I just didn't know how to do it. And it's very overwhelming. So, you know, just by inspiring, we work really hard to try and inspire every season with lots of new ideas. And I think having been a, a journalist and a stylist and working on magazines, you know, you learn the tricks of the trade and you know that there are some fantastic quick things that you can do that look beautiful but don't take too long to achieve. Yeah. And then, of course, the fourth is service. So, you know, today, service is you have to be where the customer wants, you know, where the customer wants you, when they want you. It's 24-7. It's online. It's in-store. It's in-print. So it's this sort of multi-channel experience. And, you know, you know what is... Um, what is great customer service? I mean, great customer service is actually being able to give proper, knowledgeable advice when the customer wants it. And, you know, I don't know about you, but it drives me insane when you go into a store and you'll find the sales assistants are standing behind the till just chatting to yes. each other. And they have no interest in the customer whatsoever. So, you know, how well you train your people uh, to be able to answer a question is, is, is so crucial. And I think it's, it's you know, it, it is details, you know, just, I mean, what we want every customer when they walk out of the store to be carrying a bag that's beautifully wrapped in tissue with ribbon. And if they're handing it over as a gift, we want them to feel really proud of what they're handing over. Wonderful. And I think um, at the beginning of your business, that's, I think it's, uh, it's a testament to you still being around 26 years later from actually calling your first customers for your order to say that. Yeah. Well, I think They're going to be late, you know, the roof has blown off. That's amazing customer yeah. service to call each 
customer individually, and I think that's... And each of those customers will tell 20 other people. Exactly, and I that think that's the way it works, isn't it? And it is, you know, it is building the trust. Yes. Yeah. Well, all... You all have um, products that cater or target women, mainly. Um, do you think your success has been because you're providing what men can't, as a woman? Anishka? Well, I think, um, I mean, jewellery on the whole, I design jewellery on the whole for women. Yes. But I think it is really important that as a woman designing for women, I absolutely understand how the earring has to feel. Um, you know, because if this earring is stiff and, you know, it, it moves badly when you're, or it's heavy, or it's, you know, it's just, if it's heavy and it pulls your ear down, you know, I really do understand that. Whereas men don't actually have to wear dangly earrings on the whole. So I'm sure being a woman has really helped. And also, I, you know, my jewellery is very playful because it's not just about what the jewellery looks like. For me, it's what, what does it, how does it make me feel? Um, can I, you know, can I play with it and, and, and make it really my own? All of those things, I think, a very different experience if you're, if you're wearing it as to just designing mm. it. Yes. It's not the same thing. So for me, it's, it, it's been a huge advantage. Yes. Um, I'm not sure I'd be doing it otherwise. <laughs> and Daisy, you've um, stepped into a very male-dominated <laughs> industry, but catering for women. Um, do you think that's the case with you as well? Yeah, sense? I think, you know, as Chrissy was saying, you have to make your business proposition very clear, and we've kind of chosen to make exclusively for women. I think there's a, there's a huge gap, as we know, in the market for this. I'm shocked that we were able to, to do what we're doing in 2020, but that's the way things go and, and things are changing and that's exciting. Um, but certainly for me, being a woman and having, you know, all my, my um, staff that are front facing, all women, to create this kind of empathetic outlet where we understand women's emotional relationship with clothing. You know, lots of women come in and, and, and we're so critical about our bodies, you know, as women. And we're so, it, it almost feels that there's, we're never enough and we're never what we want to be. And, and and I think as another woman talking to a woman about that, there's a real understanding. And walking into our shop, I hope it's very unintimidating and it's yeah. very welcoming and it's really cosy and, and it's a lovely feeling. Hopefully, was what the feedback we get for women to come in. And there we're able to talk about things, you know, between all different age groups. I mean, I make for women who are 18, I make for women who are 90. And we'll talk about things, you know, that they really don't want to say in front of other people normally, really private things that affect their body or you know, various, various different things. And actually, I think to have someone measuring you and, you know, looking at your body and touching it, it's, it's again something that we really want probably other women to do. That's the generalisation, but on the whole. And actually, it's allowed a much deeper relationship to build with our clients because it's a place they really come and they talk about things that they feel really safe and comfortable doing and we can make them something they'll wear the rest of their life because they can say what they don't like and what they they want to enhance about their bodies and maybe what they want to disguise so i think being having a, a women's only store helps that a lot definitely now this initiative is is all about women uh, supporting women and girls anushka and chrissy you, you both are, are very successful women so do you think uh, it's your responsibility to help others um, or do you think that's uh, quite unfair because in a way men don't usually feel that pressure to or responsibility oh, i don't know i think i mean i think the re i absolutely feel responsible yes. to to help but I, I think um i mean i don't think it's exclusive to women that i really don't i think um you know women are very generous yes in you know they they tend to be quite um quite straightforward and generous with their with their advice. Um, but I, I absolutely think that, you know, I've had lots of fantastic advice uh, from men and um, I think it's everybody's responsibility to help the next generation. Yeah. I mean, the really important thing about what, what the Princess Trust are doing and what we're really trying to do is the, this generation is the future of our country. We are, where is an absolute onus on us 
to give them every opportunity to be successful and help help make the kind of mess that we seem to be in, you know, and, and to help them and to give them the best step up that they can. I mean, I, I know you've got lots of views about that. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, absolutely. I mean, I think I think it's all of our responsibility mm. to bring the next generation on. And you know, I mean, my view is I think I think you know, men and women working together, you know, that's a powerful combination because we come at things from different angles. So when the two work together, you know, that's that's fantastic. Um, and for me, we you know when it comes to helping the next generation, you know, I love meeting. Uh, young businesswomen. I love hearing their stories. I love chatting to them, and you know, you know, I, I, you know, for me, it's 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 a two-way gift. You know, I can give them some grey hairs and some old-fashioned ways of doing things, but you know, then they tell me what they're doing, and I get to see through their lens and what they're doing from their generation's perspective. And you know, some of the young businesswomen I meet today, you know, they're doing amazing things with tech. And I'm kind of sitting there thinking, oh, crikey, I better get my act together. Um, so it's definitely, you know, it's a two-way thing, but absolutely, we should we should all be encouraging. Uh, as much it's as nice possible. to hear you say that about how you feel that you can learn. I think it's nice for people to listen to that, being, yes. you know, both of you being as successful as you are it's it can be really intimidating and you kind of I've been in that position where I've and I still am the whole time you know where you think oh gosh I just think I'll you know bother them and all these kind of insecurities we get but to hear that you actually really enjoy listening yeah. to younger people and young entrepreneurs it's a, it's that well, symbiotic it relationship it's really nice well I think it keeps keeps us and our business is relevant. Mm. I mean, that's the most important thing is, you know, because you can go at it like this one way and you see it that way. But, you know, I'll talk to my children and they'll say, oh, my God, why, are you, why are you doing that? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I've always done it like that, you know. So it's yeah. just really nice to be able to come at it both ways. So no one should ever think it's a one-way street. It's very much a kind of, you know, a, a, a cooperation. But I think that's been a very interesting piece about this pandemic experience is that, you know, in a way, you know, as a, as a business grows and becomes much bigger, you get very set in your ways mm. and you have ways of doing things. You know, in the space of three months, we had to completely change the way we work. And actually, whilst it was very stressful, it, in fact, it felt really exciting because it felt like we were real entrepreneurs right at and the very the beginning, beginning again yeah, yeah. and having to do things in a completely brand new way. Yeah. So I do think, whilst it's a really tough time at the moment, out of this mm. will come some incredible change uh, for, mm. for all of us. I agree, totally. I think the, the young women um, supported by the Princess Trust will be very interested, fascinated, um, to hear from yourself, Anushka and Chrissy, whether you think um, it's easier to be a female entrepreneur in this um, time, current time, or um, do you feel that sexism is still alive and well, or do you think it's important as well that sexism is alive and well? Um, I mean, it is alive and well, um, but it is changing. Yes. I mean, it really is changing. Um, there's a long way to go. And, um, you know, but, but I think actually what's happened is part, part of I mean, the pandemic in one way has kind of accelerated so many things that mm -hmm. needed to have a yeah. voice and to yes. be accelerated. And this has done that. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. What, what's, what do you think about that? I mean, I, <clears throat> I think I was very fortunate because all the industries that I've worked in, I haven't experienced that. Yeah. Um, I've worked in, you know, the magazine world and the creative world is 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 very open and welcoming to women. So, um, but but you know, I know there are certain industries where it absolutely exists. And to me, you know, I think the important thing is is you know building a culture within your business, which is a listening culture and is a, you know, you all need to be on the boat together, pulling in the same direction. And I think you know. As I said, you know, men and women working together is incredibly powerful. And, and just, you know, listening to people at every level in your business um, is so important because, you know, you learn so much and they'll help you um, improve the business. 
Um, and that, I mean, I, th I think, you know, if, if you're a woman working in a job uh, and you've got something that you believe passionately in and you don't feel you're being heard, I always just say, well, keep going until you get hurt. <laughs> and don't give up, yes. um, you know. That's like that book, um, Lean In, by yes. Sheryl Sandberg. I mean, she, there's such a kind of, um, for me, it was a really visual thing, but she, she basically just say, look, pull the table a bit closer because we would tend, as a woman, to have the chair back here if there was a crowd of people. Yeah. The men would probably sit strapped to the table. She's just saying, look, Pull it, put it in, mm. and lean in, and it's. I, I made my children read the book. It's just like actually, mm. it's, it's just true. Just do what you're. You know, if you don't, don't be frightened. Yes. And for you, Daisy, you're in a male-dominated yes. industry. Have you um, suffered from uh, extreme sexism? I get asked this a lot. <laughs> yes. um, but do you know what's a really? I mean, obviously, as you say, it's very alive and well and present sexism and, and we, we've come so far but have a still a long way to go. And But I think there's never, every day, I think it's, it's never been a better time to be a woman. Every day we wake up, it changes. And certainly the great thing and what I've loved about being back on Savile Row is there's a real, people have been really responsive to it. A lot of the men, I think they realise that something needs to change and I think they're really pleased to see us on the street. And so, you know, where I've kind of, I guess felt it a little is is just the assumption that women are just too difficult to make for because of, <coughs> as I say boobs and bums and and so what's the point and don't bother because there's no money in it and 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 that's what we really challenge but <coughs> now it's it's lovely to, I mean you get the occasional comment where people don't really understand why women would wear suits someone once said to me don't they only wear them to go to 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 court, which I thought was quite strange. Yeah. But you get these kind of prehistoric <laughs> viewpoints and you think, so much time cool. oh, wow. I kind of, yeah, it's, it's very strange. Um, but no, on the whole, it, it's lovely. And it's lovely to be able to, to do what we do for women. And it's very much appreciated by men on the whole. This was asked by Courtney. Does your business today still operate on the original idea or has the idea evolved over time? Um, Oh, that's an interesting question. Uh, I think it probably operates on the same, uh, on where we started. I mean, Anushka is a very different business to Links of London. Yeah. Anushka is really, really simple. It is, you know, the, the, my first business was wholesale, retail, corporate, franchise. I mean, it was really complicated. This uh, is very simple. I. My, my, our relationship very much with the customer. Uh, as I said before, I'm a woman designing jewellery for women. Um, so it's kind of very simple, but I really like the fact that I, I, my relationship is absolutely with the person who is wearing the jewellery. So, and that's just, that's a very different yes. proposition. But, but it's been like that for 10 years, yeah. and, and I kind of think it will... I can't see a reason to change. And did you um, find that the business evolved in that way because of your uh, previous experience with links um having so many um outlets um yeah i i think inevitably um i just i mean anyone that comes and says what's your advice my advice is keep it truly simple yeah. keep mm. it really simple really good otherwise the tail wags the dog yeah. mm. and you know so i just think um for me this time around it was just so important to be in total control. <laughs> yes. You know. And, and for you, Daisy, was that the same? I, I know you, you were sort of like at the beginning, but at the beginning <coughs> of when you when you decided, did you decide, okay, I only want to concentrate on women's tailoring, or did you just think I want to be a bespoke tailor? Or was it something else that you wanted to do before you actually came to bespoke tailoring? I think that a really good piece of advice I was given very in a very similar vein um, to what you were saying by someone was just focus on your, have a core product and focus on that and stick to that and sell that so well that you make yourself, again, a combination of what you both said, you know, know that you are the destination for, which we hope to be, you know, women suiting for quality, craftsmanship, longevity, versatility, you know, one product that gives all of these things. And as long as for now, you know, like you said, in the pandemic, we were able to take a step back, which early on, you know, only two years in was quite lucky for you guys. It must have been a really strange thing, but it was able to remind me, okay, 
you know, what do we want for the next five years? Is this on our goal? You know, our simple core offering? And if it isn't, then let's veer back. And that's how I hope to get us out of, you know, we're going to expand into lots of other cool things. But for now, it's about suiting as many women around the globe as we can and doing that really well. Chris is the best example of that, isn't it? Because it is the white club. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that exactly. focus on, you know, what it is. So it's, yeah. yeah. Well, you could say that, but we do. we're in so many different categories. I know, but we know it's white, yeah. but we yeah. know it's simple. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question from Lena. Um, her daughter is in the second year of management and, uh, management and business at Southampton University. Chrissy, what advice would you give her um, with so many re restrictions now for internships and work mm -hmm. experience? Well, you know, um, my daughter's in the same situation. Yeah. And actually, um, when they came home uh, at the beginning of the lockdown, um, uh, Ella, my oldest daughter, she started doing a digital internship. There are actually lots of digital internships that mm. you can do now, uh, which is a great experience. Um, she was also doing a project because she's running the her university fashion show. And then my other daughter started a business. Uh, she started a clothing business on Depop, and she was using her sister as models. So, I mean, my advice always when you're at university, you know, I remember Nick, my husband, when he was at uni. I didn't go to uni, but when he was at uni, he started three different businesses. He had a Christmas tree business, he had a shoe business. And you know, this is a time that you're never gonna get back again. So, you know, don't waste it, mm. um, you know, partying endlessly, you know, having, you don't know, you know, <laughs> start, start some, fine. you know, do, do, start something, do something, learn about something. You know, when I was at school, I, I did a, a, I sort of suddenly weirdly started making clothes and I'd sit up all night sewing and then I created this fashion show. Um, and uh, if you saw the pictures of the clothes now and looked at them, you'd be horrified. <laughs> um, but it was a great experience. And, and I think just use that time at university um, to get experience. You know, when, when I'm employing people, I want to see, I look for people who've done much more than just get a degree. I want to see they've done interesting things along. I want to see that they've run a charity event. I want to see that they've started a small business or that they've, you know, been working alongside, you know, uh, their degree. You know, do other things. It's a great time. Wonderful. Well, thank you, ladies, for such an enlightening and empowering morning. I've been fascinated by the experiences and touched by the stories of Grace and Rachel and um, all the young women that they represent. And thank you, Anushka, Chrissy, and Daisy. Um, and all I need to say to you is please give gen generously to this a brilliant um, initiative and um, have fun during your breakfasts, however you create your... Um, event and we look forward to um, welcoming you at the village. Can we ask, can we ask? Yes. Um, you know, we would love to ask all your wonderful um, Vista Village customers, you know, would you join us? Uh, would you hold your own brilliant breakfast in the next two or three weeks and help raise funds to help young women? Um, or, you know, if you like the idea of the project, please, you know, Go to the Brilliant Breakfast website, come to the Prince's Trust website and come and get involved with what we're doing and come and help us. We'd love yeah. your help. Yeah, I mean, just, it, it, we just need as many people to get behind this as, as possible. Yes. And I just have one other thing. I, I think a lot of people think that the Prince's Trust is very rich because it has the word Prince mm. in the title. It isn't. It really needs all the money to help these young people as possible. Yeah, and our dream with this project is quite simply, wouldn't it be amazing if we could persuade every single woman in the country who can to help change the life of a young woman who really, through no fault of her own, just needs a helping hand. That would be really amazing. I agree. and. Any small donation yeah, helps. Donate, it doesn't donate, matter donate. how big or small Absolutely. anything from a pound, 50 pence upwards, yeah. I think. Yeah. Every yeah. On the website, actually, it says exactly what 
what each amount, you know, what five pounds will do, what ten pounds will do. So, yeah, visit the website. So please go to the website and, and donate generously. Thank you so much.